Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to take you through the build of my gaming PC. This was a long time in the planning phases and I'm really excited to get started building this thing. Now first let me say this really isn't a how-to video. It's a first time build for me, so I'm showing you how I go went through the process of actually putting this thing together. Now I'm going to be using this PC primarily for gaming, but down the road I may use it for video production and possibly music production. Right now I have a Macintosh system that I use for those two things, but this thing is going to be pretty damn powerful, so I may use it for that as well. Now I have to tell you, I probably went through at least three weeks of analyzing the components available to build this thing. I had at least six different configurations until I finally settled on this one. And the three things that I considered for every component were speed, quality, and the ability to upgrade and evolve the system as I go along. In a nutshell, I wanted something really fast that wasn't going to break and wasn't going to be obsolete in a year. And I really think I accomplished that with these components. Now one thing that's missing here is the graphics card, so let me talk about that. I'm starting this build on the day that the NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card has been released in stores. The EVGA GTX 1080 SC card that should probably be available in about a month, that's ultimately the one that I want to get. But for now, what I did is I ordered it, I bought a used GTX 970 SC card on eBay, got a really good price for it, and that's this card I'm going to be putting into this system in a couple of days, just to hold me over until the 1080 is available. Now let me walk you through the components that I selected for this build. Let's start with the case. I selected the Fractal Design Define R5 case. I wanted the Blackout Edition because I wanted everything inside to be black. I wasn't really interested in having a window because I'm not really going to be showing this off to anybody, and really the silence of the computer was more important. This case is a little on the expensive side, but it's got great airflow design, and it also is very configurable for pretty much any type of situation that you want to set it up for. It comes with two fans, but I bought an extra fan because I want to put one in the front to increase the airflow in the case. For the power supply, I went with the EVGA Supernova 750 G2, 750 watt power supply, plenty of power for anything I want to do. I can go up to two graphics cards if I wanted to easily with this. It's got a 10 year warranty, great reviews. Again, a little bit ex on the expensive side, but I think the one area that you definitely don't want to ever skimp on is the power supply. You want something really, really good so you don't have any problems. For the CPU with the Intel Core i7-6700, I think it's going to be plenty of power for what I want to do. Uh, it's not a clockable CPU, but that's okay. I think I'm going to be set with that. For the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte Z170X UD5TH. Great reviews on this board. It also has Thunderbolt capability, so I could use it for music if I want to. If you want to see an unboxing of this, I did that in a separate video. You can click a link below in the description to see that. For memory, I went with Corsair DDR4 Vengeance LPX 16 gig. Should be plenty of memory for any gaming, but if I want to add another 16 gig down the road, I certainly can. For the CPU cooler, I went with the Arctic Freezer 7 Pro Rev 2. Now I thought about using the Intel stock cooler that came with my CPU, but I read a few things online that said that this cooler could reduce temperatures by about 15-20%, so I figured for $23 it was worth it. Now for the drives. For the boot drive, I went with a Samsung SSD 850 EVO M.2 250 gig drive. It's going to sit right on the motherboard and it's going to be fast as hell. Now this drive will only be used as a Windows drive and to record gameplay. For the second drive, I've got a Samsung 850 EVO 500 gig SSD. This disk will be used for Steam library, other games, and any other applications. And to round the system out, I've got a Samsung DVD drive, Logitech keyboard, and Logitech mouse. If you want to see a complete list, just click the My Gaming PC link in the description. Now, let's get on with the build. All right, so I decided to do some time lapse because I didn't think you guys would want to see a two-hour video of me building a PC. So here I am prepping the case, uh, just basically taking the uh, cages out. I'm going to put a fan in here. There's the, uh, the filter that slides out from the bottom, so you have to unscrew the screws from the bottom cage. And I was thinking about going with the three-rack ca three cage, but I decided to go with the five. Just, just just so I have the extra space. So um, we're gonna put the fan in here now. It's the same fan that comes with the system. I just bought another one, it was like 13 bucks. Pretty easy to go in, just gotta remember to put the wire through the little hole there so that uh, everything lines up proper, properly. Well, 
what can you say? It's a fan. So I decided to switch the door. You're able to switch the door on this particular case, so I switched it to the other side because my PC is going to be on my right, and it just make it much easier. It took me about uh, 10 minutes to do that. It's a little tricky, but I figured it out after a little bit of thinking. Pretty so yeah, so I went with the five rack gauge. Those actually go in by hand. You can hand tighten those, but I use the screwdriver. So here's a DVD. Those are also hand tightened screws that you put one on each side just to make sure that it's in there properly and it's not going to shift. Pretty simple to set up. And it was time to put the SSD. Now I decided to put the SSD in the drive rack rather than in the back where it has the two. Um, SSD mounts just because I wanted to use one um, SATA power cable and it was closer to the DVD drive so I just figured it'd be easier. It took me a few minutes and it's, it's you can put them in there. This is the EVGA 750G2 power supply. It was fit perfectly and actually gave some extra room in there. Uh, really simple to install. Plenty of power. Uh, can actually handle two CPUs. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty killer power supply. Okay, so off camera, I installed the standoffs for the motherboard. I just basically looked at the manual and looked at the, the motherboard that I'm installing, and I used this little white tool with a screwdriver to install them. I think I have them right, but I'll make sure once I install, when I install the, the motherboard, that everything's cool before I put it in there because you don't want any, any metal touching the motherboard that's unnecessary. All right, well, I've got the case all prepped, ready to go, so now it's time to work on the motherboard. Got a couple things to install here. First, a Core i7-6700 processor, uh, which we're going to install. It came with a the Intel heatsink, which I'm basically going to probably maybe sell on eBay for a few dollars, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use an Arctic Freezer 7 Pro Rev 2 heatsink. Um, I'm not overclocking, uh, but I saw a couple of studies where that this can actually lower the temperature by about uh, 20 percent so I think it's important to do that. I've got Corsair Vengeance uh, DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM 16 gig. I'm going to be installing that and then I've got a, this is the part I was waiting for, a uh, Samsung uh, 850 EVO M2 uh, 250 gigabyte internal drive. This is going to go right on the motherboard. That's going to be my boot drive for Windows. This is what we're going to install so let's get started. All right, so if there was one part of this that I was most nervous about, it was this part right here, installing the CPU. I was really worried that I was going to botch it, but it's real simple to do. Everything's marked. Um, it is it is kind of tight to put that that, uh, that that cover on there, so you have to be ready for that. But uh, it was pretty simple to do. Really nothing to be worried about. The RAM's pretty simple. Now, these uh, RAM sticks have this little plastic cover over the logo, which you have to take off. You don't want to leave that on there because I'm sure that uh, uh, after time, you'd probably start to smell burning plastic or melting plastic, so you want to make sure you take that off. Those went in real simple. Next was the M.2 drive, 250 meg uh, gigabits. Installs right on the motherboard, real simple. Take one screw out. It's about the size of a stick of gum. Slide it in, and then just basically screw it down, and that was it. It's always drive zero, so you can't use your drive zero SATA port, and you got to your next device has to be drive one. This is the Arctic uh, Seven Freezer, whatever the hell it is. Um, this was a little tricky, but not too bad. Um, I just had to figure out which way to put these pins. The, two of the black pins I put the opposite way, but they, it turns out it really—I don't think it really matters. It was—it was plenty tight. So, and let me tell you, this thing is really quiet. It's—I I, that's one thing I was worried about was the, the noise from this fan, but it's super quiet. So once that's in, then you basically, you want to make sure that the fan is facing the memory because the, it's going to blow air across the radiator towards the back. You have to take the fan off before you install it. And um, this was a little tricky because of the um, thermal paste that kind of slides around a little bit. 
So you want to get it in there. You know, you don't want to tighten it down too much. I felt like if I tightened it too much, it would be like squishing the chip, the, the CPU. So it's in there firm, but not too tight. So after that's done, you can um, you can pop the fan on. I guess I'm just making sure. Yeah, I think I actually thought I might have over tightened it, so I loosened it up a little bit. So now I just pop the fan, it just clips on real easy, and plug it into the CPU fan. And that's it. Pretty simple. Now it's time to put it into, put this, the motherboard into the, the case. I did put the standoffs in. Uh, it came with eight, that's how many I needed. Uh, and that was simple. This is right here is where it's really important to have a magnetic screwdriver. You can't put this board in unless you have a magnetic screwdriver. It's just impossible. There's no way you can get your fingers, at least I can't get my fingers on those tiny screws and put them where they need to be. So, if you're going to build a PC, make sure you have a magnetic number one and number two screwdriver. You don't want to over tighten these, but they need to be tight enough, obviously, so it's not going to shift. And you have to make sure that it, it, it connects up and uh, lines up properly with the I.O. shield. Alrighty, well, ready to hook up the power. I got it on my swivel here, which is nice. This thing was 20 bucks on Amazon. It makes it much easier. You can just spin it right around. So I did notice a problem, a slight problem with the motherboard lining up with uh, the I.O. Let me just show you, see if you can see it here. All right, they're a little bit off. There's really not, I don't think there's much I can do about it. I'm hoping that it looks like I'll be able to have clearance to get a USB in there. It's just certainly the Ethernet port's okay, HDMI port looks okay, but it's just a little like a tad off, kind of a bummer. But anyway, other than that, so far everything's pretty cool. I only have a few things to power here. I've got to power the motherboard, the CPU. So this is my main regular power cable to the to the wall. So I only need three power cables. My here's my CPU cable. These all come with the, the with the. Uh, the EVGA power is really nice. Like they have this nylon mesh around the edge of it. And they're, they're very nice. So it's going to look great when I get this installed. Here's the motherboard cable and then a SATA cable. So I need three power cables for this because I'm going to basically have the two drives, the um, DVD drive and the SSD drive on the same power cable. The motherboard goes to that and then the CPU and then that's, that's pretty much it. So I guess we'll start with the uh, motherboard. All right, so this was one of the more challenging parts of the build, so it was certainly easy to plug it into the power supply. But making sure it was the right way on the motherboard, it does have a clip on it, and in hindsight, you know, I, I know now how to do it. But, you know, doing it the first time, you want to make sure you do it right. But it went in pretty easy. The CPU power was a little different because it's a split uh, connector of eight pins, and you have to, like, put it together to put it in there, and you got to get your hand back in there to do it. Um, it was kind of difficult to get it in there, but um, it took me a little bit longer. I kind of edited it down, uh, but I did get it in. Now the, the SATA power was real simple. I just weaved that through, and it worked out perfectly having the two drives right next to each other like that. So now here I'm connecting up the SATA cables. Uh, I believe the DVD is SATA 1, and the SSD, the 500 megabyte SSD is SATA 2. Again, you can't use SATA 0 because... Uh, the M.2 drive uses that. So that was a real simple connection. And actually, the board comes with four. Now this USB connector, it's a real thick cable. Um, the connector itself has real small pins, so I was kind of worried about bending them. But, you know, I made sure it was lined up properly to put it in there. But I think Fractal could probably design that cable a little bit better. Now what's missing from the video here is the connecting of the HD audio, the USB 2, and the front panel umbilical. Unfortunately, I didn't really get a good shot of that. Like, the angles weren't good. Like, all you saw was my hand, so it really wouldn't have benefited you to see that. Uh, I could tell you that it was real easy to do, especially with that G connector, where you just basically put all the uh, the, the, the LED connectors and the, heart, the, um, the power switch and the reset switch on that little clip, and you plug it right onto the board made it super simple. The other ones were real easy. You know, the HD audio just goes in HD audio, and they're clearly marked on the motherboard, so that was pretty easy to do. 
Also, the last thing I did was connect up the system fans. There's, uh, I think, five system fans you can set, you can connect up on this motherboard. I had three to connect. They were super simple. The bo- the case itself also has its own fan system. Like, if you want to use the control switch on the front, I decided not to use that because the Gigabyte board that I have has uh, software that manages the fan th- from temperatures and stuff. So I, that's the better way to go. So after everything was connected, and I believe me, I double checked everything to make sure it was connected properly. I was ready to go uh, fire it up for the first time. Okay, moment of truth. Keyboard hooked up, mouse hooked up, monitor hooked up, power hooked up. I got a red light inside on the motherboard, so that's good news. I'm gonna hit the power button here, and hopefully everything will come up. Let's just see. All right, well, I'm gonna hit the power button here, and uh, I just wanna see some sort of message on the monitor, and then I'm gonna, after that, I'll check the BIOS and make sure that's all up to date. But here we go. Let's make sure. Let's see how we go here. Ooh, fans on. That's good news. All the fans, the fans are working. All the fans are working. That's good news. Motherboard's going through some stuff. That's good news. So far, so good. cycling through this is exciting man hopefully everything works man and here we go boot and select proper boot device or insert boot media and selected boot device and press the key <laughs> awesome man that's awesome that means everything is hooked up properly I just want to chug up to check all my ports to make sure they're all hooked up and stuff but uh, it looks like we're a go, so I'm going to go ahead and um, check the BIOS, make sure that's updated, and then we'll get Windows installed, Windows 10, and then we'll be good to go. So let me go do that, and we'll be back. All right, well, I finished the Windows installation, installing all the drivers, and I also updated Windows. Now, here's a couple things. The original Windows installation took about 12 minutes, Windows 10 Home, which I thought was amazing. Drivers didn't take long. I had those downloaded on a USB stick. And the Windows update, there was a little bit of an issue that I ran into where it wouldn't update automatically, so I had to download this media download tool from Microsoft, whatever it was, and I had to basically upgrade, do a full upgrade of Windows. That only took about 15 minutes, and I think it's obviously because of the M2, I've got a pretty decent internet uh, connection, but I think it's a combination of the M2 drive, the M.2 drive, and the, and the CPU that I have. Just lightning fast. The only issue I have is one of the USB 3 ports on the front panel, the top panel, isn't working. Everything else works. I'm not sure what the problem with that is. I'll get to it, but I've got enough USB ports that I'm not going to have a problem. So I just want to show you how quickly this thing boots up. It's pretty amazing. I'm just going to shut it down here. And while I'm doing that, I just want to you know, tell you that it wasn't difficult to do. I mean, I did a lot of research to learn how to do this and to make sure I was you know, doing it the right way. I watched a lot of videos, especially Kerry Holtzman was really helpful. His videos were really helpful and a few others, but uh, his, his in particular were very detailed and allowed me to really understand exactly what to do. As far as the components go, I spent a lot of time researching before I finally settled on this one and I'm really happy that I did. So. Let's do a boot up. Here we go. Ready? Right, you can see me. Hopefully, you can see me pressing the button here. I'm pressing it now. And that's how fast Windows boots up. Lightning, lightning fast. Really, lightning fast, and I'm really happy. Actually, what I'm gonna do now is break it down, take it back into where I was working on it, clean up the cables in the back, get all that done, close it up. I've already started to download something. Like, I put Steam on my second drive, the, the, the 500 gigabyte SSD, because I want all that stuff on a separate drive. So I'm gonna break this thing down now, clean up the cables, uh, close it up. So let's go clean the cables up. Alrighty, well, last thing is to clean up the cabling. And it's always, I guess it's a good idea to do that last just in case something didn't work. I'm pretty happy with the way it, the cabling is in the, in the front of it. 
This USB cable is a real, this USB 3 cable is a really thick cable. So there's not much you can do about training that cable, but everything else I kind of took care of as I went through it. And it, I'm not really too worried about it because I don't have a glass case. So as long as it's clean and it's good airflow and it looks decent, I'm pretty happy. So I'm happy with that. We'll take a look at the back here. I've got a little bit of a cleanup to do because I've got to get that um, the cover on here. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, but the main one is this one here. Probably don't want that touching the motherboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to keep these cables. I'm going to use this um, this Velcro strap right here and try to keep all these cables together in that strap. I'm not too worried about these. You know, if they're a little loose. I, okay, big deal. You know. I'm not that OCD to make sure that every single cable is, is completely perfect. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to have any technical problems. So, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to try to use this Velcro strap here to try to rein in these cables here. Like that. Maybe a little tighter. Nice, it's a nice feature having that strap, man. So that I mean, that, I should have enough clearance to get the, the the back plate on. Should be good there. We'll find out in a second. The SATA cables, again, I'm not too worried about those either. Fan cables, I could probably put tie wraps on them, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it at least loose for a little while, just to so it, so it runs for a few days. Everything is cool. I know it's working, and then I can. I can go back and uh, maybe clean it up a little bit more. So I think that's good for now. I'm going to get the panels on here. So, yeah, this thing kind of fell out in my lap when I pulled it off. So, that's pretty much it right there. What's nice is there's about an inch of space back there. So, there's really a lot of room for cabling. And that's it, that's the cover on that side. Again, I'll go back and check it out, make sure everything's cool, but I think for the most part, it's good. So we'll get the front cover on. There you go, just like that. Not, too, not hard at all. So the only critical issues I have with it is this back plate here, it's a little off, although it seems to be coming in line now that I've plugged a few things into it. And the USB 3 port on the front, one of them doesn't work. But other than that, I'm super happy with this. I've got an ass kicking computer now, no more potato. I'll be able to run all the games that I play real quickly. That's it for my build. I hemmed and hawed about whether to do it myself or to have somebody else do it. And I'm glad that I did it myself because I think it came out really great. And I know what's in there. And I know that it has an upgrade path. One thing I will say is it's absolutely silent. I mean, I was running it, doing a bunch of stuff on it last night, and it is absolutely quiet. And that was with the two side panels off it. So I'm really happy with that. So it's time to clean up, get this thing put in its place, getting my graphics card in a couple days, and then uh, we'll be set to go. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If this was lame, well, sorry. But if it was awesome, please hit the like button. It really helps. And be sure to subscribe for more gaming videos. When shopping on Amazon, please use the link in the description below. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Have a great day!